What's up, Kansas City? I'm Corey. I'm Roxy. And we're Drake Casey, coming back at you with another episode. Yeah, so hope you guys all had a really awesome 4th of July weekend, um, that you all survived it. Yep. And uh, hope you got to have some really awesome local KC drinkage. We know we did. We certainly did. We had some Stockyards, uh, what was it, Stockyards we Fox some, Trotter. We had some Fox Trotter at Liberty Memorial. We found a little booth set up, we got to do that. Yeah, that was fabulous. <laughs> but... As awesome as Stockyards is, that is not the focus of our episode tonight. Because we've already done that. We have. So today, we're going to be talking about J. Rieger & Co. Distillery. Yep. We're really good at intros. Didn't you know that? Didn't you know? We are not so good, but J. Rieger & Co. is oh so good. That's correct. You might have seen that slogan on their uh, mural on the side of the Rieger Hotel. So that is their slogan from original slogan. From their inception. Yes. Uh, Nowadays, they are located in Kansas City, right next to Knuckleheads, if you know where that is. Um, So we're going to give you a little rundown on the history of it. It's actually got a really cool history behind the distillery. Yeah. Kind of of behind the distillery. Yeah. And we're barely going to scratch the surface. We had like, we had a tour and there's a ton of cool information there and you should... Just check it out. We're just going to, and we're going to begin at the end. Go check them out. Yes. And honestly, like you guys, if you've listened to us at all, you know that we're usually having to really dig for information or go ask people what's going on or, you know, we have a tough time. If you want the coolest history lesson ever, go to their website or go on their tour because they have so much stuff you can learn. Uh, So yeah, we're just going to give you a little taste of it so that you go and experience it for yourself yep so it all started back at the, in the beginning day. <laughs> it started at the end no it started at the beginning it started at the beginning with jacob rieger who immigrated from austria hungary in 1877 and he opened J. rieger and co in the west bottoms across from uh, across from the livestock exchange building so back then um, the West Bottoms was known as the wettest block in the world because Kansas had actually gotten the jump on prohibition. And as you know, we are sort of on the line of Kansas and Missouri here. Uh, so all the people, instead of, you know, abiding by the laws of no, of no drinking in Kansas, would just hop on over to the West Bottoms yep. and get their fill there and then go home. Yep. Conveniently located right off of the... The, <laughs> right off of the uh, river. state line. And yeah, on the river. state line. Uh, so J. Rieger & Co. became the largest mail order whiskey house in the U.S. prior to Prohibition. Uh, mail order whiskey was like an interesting concept for me. Like, I, I mean, usually for me, I couldn't do mail order whiskey. I can't even do Walmart groceries because it's like, I, wanna, I want a candy bar now. I can't wait. Yep. But back in the day, I'm sure it was like, you want to get some of this stuff and you, you'll you wait a couple weeks or months, I guess. I don't know how long it would take to get there. The idea of just shipping alcohol to me is, to an individual, is kind of wild. Yeah, when it's so difficult now to ship alcohol. Right. So I, I thought it was funny on their website. They literally called their own advertising back then spam. <laughs> yeah, they said like... They would literally, he would literally just send it to cities to distribute yeah for people to fill out saying like hey how many of this like how many of these bottles do you want it's like what is this i i mean i guess i want all the bottles i guess i do want it though yeah it's effective spam yeah uh so then kind of actually to just support the distillery um rieger opened a hotel near union station so union station actually used to be somewhere else and they moved it to where it is now Union Station is awesome. I work there now, and it's super cool. Hence why we've been a little off with our upload schedule, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, Not to put all the blame on you. It's it's mostly on me. It's okay. <laughs> it's it's okay. okay. I've still been doing research for this show, to be fair. To be fair, most of our success is also on you, so oh. it kind of works. Well, thanks. High five. But anyway, Union Station, moved to where it is now. 
Very cool. And Rieger was like, this is a perfect opportunity. So he opened a hotel, just a flu- few. A flu- I have not been drinking that much, I promise. Few blocks north of Union Station and put a giant mural on the side of his whiskey. So it was really, it was like a budget hotel. It was really more of like a living advertisement for the distillery than it was like he was trying to get into the hotel business or anything. Yep. He purchased a budget motel for for traveling salesmen and just put a mural up on the side and then just ran it the same way otherwise. And we'll come back to this in a bit, but you guys have probably seen that mural and it's super awesome. It's downtown in the crossroads. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. So sadly... Uh, everything was going awesome. It was going super great. And then Prohibition hit. And unfortunately, uh, Jay Rieger and co. was not able to continue. Uh, they ended up closing their doors of the hotel and the distillery. And um, the family moved into working in banking. So, the end. Just kidding. The end. Until. Until. Um. Some of you guys may know uh, that a while back, I believe it was in 2010, uh, but Ryan Maybe, uh, who's a bartender in town, wanted to open his own cocktail uh, place. So he opened this speakeasy called Manifesto that was in the basement of the old Rieger Hotel building. For the record, we know his name. It was Ryan Maybe. She wasn't like yeah, it's pontificating it's, on Maybe. That was his it's name. It's Maybe, like bzz, B. Not like Ryan Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for. Ca- I would not have thought about that. You know, you look at your notes and you don't hear the way things come out of your mouth sometimes. Honestly, I just thought it was a good joke. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so he was like, he opens this this uh the speakeasy and then he's like what is this like huge mural on the side of the building here and he looked into the history of it and he's like this is awesome i should open a restaurant too so he opens a restaurant on the top floor like above manifesto and andy rieger who is like the i think he's like the last living male rieger like actually named he's rieger the the he's carried the name came back uh, at, for the Rieger restaurant opening because he wanted to honor the history of the building. And he just goes, hey, we should like reopen the distillery. You know that whiskey we have plastered on the side of the building? We should just make it. We should just make it. <laughs> Which is like such an offhanded way to be like, let's just start this huge endeavor. Let's just be but distillers. Hey, you know that's how cool dreams start. You just go, hey, we should just start a podcast. Yeah. And look at us now. <laughs> With a podcast. Gone for two months, but we're back. <laughs> so they decided to open up the distillery and start running in what is now, I don't know what that area is called, but it's near Knuckleheads. So I think that might be called the East Bottoms, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> you will. No, I won't. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Winks into microphone. (laughs) Winks into microphone. Okay. So anyway, so we went and did a tour there uh, back when we originally meant to do this episode. So forever ago at this point. Um, But it has burned into our brains in all the best ways. So we are going to recount our experience there. Yeah, don't worry. They don't actually burn anything on you. It's just for the example. For legal purposes. <laughs> this is like a disclaimer. Uh, so when you go to their space, like we said, it's near Knuckleheads. Their building is really gorgeous. You go in and it's this big open space. Um, there's kind of there's a tasting room, I believe, off to the left. Yep. Um, but then off to the right, there's this whole historical like front room where you can learn all about the history of Jay Rieger and of the Kansas City area and the you know, the whole Pendergast machine. I think there's information mm-hmm. there. There's a bunch of artifacts, like bottles that they found um, of the old bottles. Mm. Uh, it's a it's a huge room full of artifacts, stuff they recovered from the uh, hotel prior to it 
being closed and then reopened as when I think they found all that stuff when they reopened it as yeah. a restaurant. And um they have little excerpts, uh Kansas City Star articles you can read. They're my favorite article, and I just remembered this. There was an article about a guy who like held up sort of held up a uh, people at a hotel but he wasn't like holding them up for money he was just going like door to door at a hotel with a gun and like making people dance it was like for- <laughs> forcing people to dance yeah, so- and they finally caught him and he was like taken away <laughs> yeah and so some of it's not even about anything to do with it it's just yeah. interesting history of Kansas City they even have one of my favorites was they have one of their bottles and their display was broken and right next to it, they have a picture of a screenshot of someone texting the boss saying, I just broke a hundred year old bottle. Oh, no. Yeah. Like it's it's like text message crying over. I can't believe I broke one of our bottles. Ah! So, so, yeah, you definitely need to check it out. And it's nice because if you go for a tour, you know, sometimes you got to wait a couple minutes for everybody to get there and you can just wander around. And it's like a little mini museum. Mm hmm. And so we went and did the tour and we got to walk around in that while we waited for the tour to start. And then once the tour starts, after you just got done reading all the history, you have someone reading more history to you on their video. So they have like a 20 minute um, info documentary. Yeah, it's like like a documentary video that is the coolest Kansas City history video I've ever seen. It just, it ties in all of why Kansas City had this big heyday um, prior to and then around Prohibition, there what all the factors were of why it was such a hub. And honestly, like, a, a lot of people underestimate Kansas City nowadays. And I think had we not had a couple of really bad floods and, like, fires and things that they talk about in this video, I don't think that would be the case. I think Kansas City would be as big and well-known as places like Chicago. But there were just, we were on this track to be this huge city and just a couple of unfortunate circumstances. Or fortunate if you, you know, it's kind of awesome being in this super nice, best-kept secret city. But yeah, yeah, interesting stuff. Without spoiling too much, essentially... This video pontificates that a lot of where Kansas City fell short industrially was because they built everything in the West Bottoms first, which Kansas River and Missouri River would flood and take out most of that business. Yep. Um, But anyway, then we actually continue on the tour and see the rest of what they have going on. And it's this huge area, like the distilling, the whole building and the distilling area, I I would say is the biggest I've seen in Kansas City. Yeah. It's huge. A um, bunch of, uh, they have two, I believe two really big copper stills. One is named Sherry and one is named Genesee. Uh, I actually had to write it down because I was like, I will absolutely not remember that, but those are cool. Everybody names their stills. It's kind of cute. Because they do, they do the work. They're like... They're part of the team. They're part of the team. Yeah. No, I get it. It's just kind of cute. Uh, one funny part from our tour was um, we go on a lot of tours, as you guys know. So it's funny sometimes when someone asks a question that we haven't heard before. So we were over where uh, what the area where they have the head, the heart, and the tail. Yeah, where I, I don't know that they, there's a name yeah, for it. Yeah, basically it's... where they, when they distill... The whiskey, they they separate out the first stuff, which is like way too much, put the hair on your chest, way too strong, kills you, kind of stuff makes you go blind. And then the heart is the good stuff that you want. And then the tail is the thing. It's just weak it's and just weak. full of particulars. So whatever that tank is called, some guy was like, so when it comes out of here before it's aged, that's moonshine, right? And the guy's like, um... <laughs> No, because moonshine is illegal. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. So that was funny. I, um, but anyway. Yeah, so then they walk, they walk you through the entire process of making whiskey, fermenting, and then distilling. And then you walk over to their aging room where they have 
Did we ever get a number? I think it was like oh. 4,000 barrels or something. Okay. So we just checked the notes. It was 2,500 or more barrels and roughly 500,000 bottles of whiskey in their barreling, their aging area. Yeah, like 500,000 bottles Potential worth. bottles. Yeah. <laughs> Future bottles. Yes, future bottles. <laughs> Want to grow up to be bottles of whiskey. Yes. And I thought it was really cool. One of my favorite parts of that part was they have an event space hidden in the middle of all the bottle, all the barrels. Yeah, it's called the uh, the Jacob's Barrel Room, I think I looked up. But it was funny because they were like, please don't disturb the people. And it's like this really nice, like, executive They had like meeting. an executive meeting going on in there. <laughs> But like, oh, excuse us, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, it's it's incredible to be, um, I believe it's called the Rick House is where they have that. And we were lucky, the weather, this was, how long ago this was? We were there when the weather was very mild, uh, but it's not temperature controlled in there. And you don't want it to be temperature controlled because with bottles of, uh, with barrels of whiskey, you want that temperature fluctuation because it really forces the the whiskey in and out of the wood. So it really picks up the flavors of the chard inside of a barrel. Yeah. We've kind of talked briefly in other episodes about aging statements and how they can be kind of misleading. And that's kind of another factor in it is like the aging of whiskey is different based on the conditions the barrel is in. Yes. So in addition to uh, the spaces that we've mentioned, they also have the Hey Hey Club, which we have not been to, really, really want to go to. It's their kind of basement jazz lounge, and I hear great things. So if we go there, we'll let you guys know. But we did go up to the Monogram Lounge, which is a little restaurant that they have on their second floor. Yep. It's got a full menu of food as well as some of the signature cocktails you can get from them and you can do a tasting up there which is what we did we did their tasting it comes with four of their in-house spirits but so they have a vodka a gin a whiskey and cafe amaro which is a coffee liqueur yeah so one thing we learned on their tour is that they want to be a bartender's spirit. They're not trying to be a really over-the-top interesting spirit on its own. They want to be very friendly to cocktails. So they have very clean and and crisp tastes that aren't going to blow you away with how unique they are. Yeah. But they were super high quality and super smooth across the board. Yes, for sure. So starting off with the vodka. Which is always tough to talk about the taste of vodka because you don't want to taste anything. Yeah, you don't really want to taste it. It's kind of neat. It is a 100% wheat-based vodka. And uh, honestly, that's about the most interesting thing I can say about it. (laughs) It was smooth, uh, a little buttery, if I remember right. Which is kind of weird to think, but Mm -hmm. it's about the best description I got. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So next was their Midwestern Dry Gin. So this is kind of neat. They're, uh, they were making a gin, I believe. And then they got in touch with the uh, master distiller for Tanqueray. And he was looking to kind of take on a passion project. And I believe he was leaving Tanqueray. Yep. And he had this really amazing recipe for a gin that obviously, you know, he couldn't make it tankery because it is what it is already. You can't really change the recipe. So he brought that really awesome recipe over to Jay Rieger. And that is the gin that they use. Yeah. It's a super high quality uh, London dry is the style for the gin drinkers out there. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's dry. It's (laughs) unique in that A lot of the other places we've been, they have gin, but they're kind of trying to reinvent gin. They're always going above and beyond with new flavors, and they always end up really interesting. But this is a very, like, textbook London dry gin. It only comes with five ingredients. Five botanicals, yeah. Yeah. Which were juniper, coriander, angelica root, licorice root, and orange peel. 
Yes. Um, but despite only having five botanicals, I thought it was still very complex and interesting. He made it a point on the tour to say that we want you to be able to taste every ingredient in the gym. Yes. Every botanical we have, we want you to taste it. We want you to really be able to identify it. Yeah, and I think it really succeeds yeah. in that. Next, we're going to talk about the Cafe Amaro. We're going to skip the whiskey for a minute because that one we actually have on hand in a bottle that we're going to live try again. Yes. So Cafe Amaro was a coffee liqueur that they make. Yes, which if you've heard coffee liqueur, this is not Kahlua. <laughs> Just, I think I sort of knew a little bit better. I think you had kind of a different impression of what this was going to be going into it. And we were both a little surprised. It was good, but it was a little like, whoa, whiplash. Not what we thought it was going to be. Yeah, I was definitely thinking like Kahlua, like super sweet coffee. Yes, and this is not that right. at all. It's got herbal characteristics to it, so it's not sweet. Like, maybe a little bit sweet, but... Not really. A lot of depth of flavor to it. Uh, and it is actually made with a single-origin coffee roast from the coffee roasters here in Kansas City, Thou Mayest, which is cool. So I love when uh, drinkeries collaborate with other either keep, other drinkeries or other businesses in town it's just yeah, it's so cool keep it local keep it local that's like our whole thing exactly that's exactly what we're trying to talk about yes and it spends a little bit of time in a whiskey barrel um i didn't really get any kind of whiskiness out of it but it, it isn't very long yeah it might pick up a little bit of a smoky hint to it but yeah it wasn't our favorite for sure, but I think it's kind of one of those things that's an acquired taste or really good in a cocktail that's really made for it. Yeah, that and that's the one shame is we didn't get to try that one in a cocktail. No, but there's but always could, tomorrow. If we go back. <laughs> if we go back. So last, but certainly not least, is Rieger's Kansas City Whiskey, which is their flagship spirit. And it's super awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. It is a pre-prohibition style spirit. Yeah, because rectification. So if you listen to our West Bottoms Whiskey Co. episode, rectification was something that was big pre-prohibition. And basically what rectification is, is that back in the day, whiskey was not barrel aged for very long, uh, for a variety of reasons, I think. Uh, so it was kind of harsh. And it was pretty strong and little like, you know, blow your eyebrows off. So they would blend um, different kinds of whiskey together and add a little bit of sherry to kind of mellow it out a little bit. So it wasn't so in your face. So the Kansas City whiskey from Reeker is a blend of bur uh, straight bourbon, light corn whiskey, and straight rye whiskey with a little bit of 15-year-old Oloroso sherry. Which is really neat. Yeah. That it's like they're really sticking to their historical roots. So without further ado, let's try some. Yes, and thank you to The Grand, if any of you are following. This was a move-in present from our apartment, which is super cool. How many apartments do you move into? And they're just like, hi, well, thank you for living here. How about a bottle of really nice whiskey? So cheers to that. Yes. And cheers to this whiskey that we're about to drink. Yes. So to me, it's got like a spicier note than some of the other whiskeys that we've tried. Yeah. It's got a little bit of smoke, a little bit of spice, and... The sherry, I feel like, just kind of tames those. It doesn't really add a sweetness. Yeah, I don't get a lot of sweetness out of it. It's got kind of a harshness to it, I feel like. It's a little bit less vanilla-y. Yeah, so if you're used to drinking uh, a bourbon or just a straight whiskey, it's probably got quite a bit of a vanilla sort of sweetness to it. And this is... This is Not the, the rise really coming through. Yeah. So kind of neat thing about this whiskey as we're drinking it. Um, 
as you heard earlier in this episode, I'm a really big fan of Union Station. Still can't believe I get to work there. Still blows my mind every day. Um, Casey, this Kansas City whiskey was launched at the 100 year anniversary of this, of the new Union Station. New, quote unquote. Um, and so it was very fitting because, you know, the hotel had opened up down the street from it when it first opened. So it was cool that it launched at the hundred year anniversary. And then it was named in the top four for international new spirits at the 2015 Tales of the Cocktail Spirited Awards. I believe I said that right. Sounded good to me. Yay. Which basically means it's really good. It's really good. And you should really check it out. Yes. So, quick side note before we sign off: if you're if you're uh, looking for a cocktail recommendation for the summer, check out a horse feather. And if you're gonna make a horse feather, you have to use this whiskey. That's what the guy who made it said. It was invented in Lawrence, and it's a lemony whiskey drink, and it's perfect for a summer day. And it's made with ginger beer, which is not actual beer, contrary to what I believe. It's more like ballsy ginger ale but yeah if you haven't had a horse feather it is like a quintessential kansas city cocktail and you really need to go try it absolutely and now last but certainly not least your favorite part oh my god i forgot about it thank you for reminding me this is why i keep you around the best part of the whole and i even wrote it in like all caps so i wouldn't forget and i did anyway that's yeah. how good this whiskey is guys that's how good it is but you wrote it in all caps at the at the middle of the page when you knew we were ending with this i didn't know we were ending with it it is what we ended our whole tour with though uh and it was fantastic they have a slide that goes from their second story and it's a twisty slide. And I thought it was still closed from COVID because when we went there was before they lifted all the mass mandates and stuff. And I went over and I was like, hey, do you know when your slide will be open? They're like, oh, you can go on it now. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> she and went on it twice. I did. She climbed the stairs to go down the slide again. I have bad knees, y'all. And I did it twice. <laughs> it's awesome. So go to Jay Rieger, go check out their awesome spirits, especially their fantastic Kansas City whiskey. Go down the slide once or 10 times. I'll meet you there. Have a drink each time you go down the slide. It gets more fun every time. It gets more fun every time. I promise. And with that, thanks for hanging out with us. Sorry we've been gone. Uh, life just, I feel like we say this every time, but life is crazy. But we hope that you guys are having a fantastic summer and that uh, you're drinking lots of great Kansas City drinkage. And we raise our glasses to you guys. Yep. So yes. from your local amateur alcohol aficionados, I'm Corey. I'm Roxy. And no matter what you're drinking, you should be drinking KC. We'll see you next time. Hey Kansas City drinkers, want to see pictures of all the coolest drinkeries in town or get previews of upcoming episodes? Then make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And if you need or just prefer captions, check out our subtitled episodes available on YouTube. It's always more fun to drink KC when we all do it together. Cheers! <laughs>